right, let's go right to it. Let's go. Um, it's all good. I knew I was waiting for you, so totally fine. So I'm like, well, you know, overall, it's just we had to have better execution of ball placement, being able to get off blocks, avoid to the kick side. Now, when you talk about like the run game, okay, kickoff is a big run play. Mm-hmm. There's gaps. Everybody's responsible for a gap. You know, when leakage happen, where explosive, explosive plays happen, is you either have too many guys in the same gap or you don't have somebody in that gap. And that's where that we got exposed. So we have to do a better job, one, execute, executing, getting our, our guys in the proper position to make plays and be gap control so we can force the ball carrier to go east and west. And that's, you know, my responsibility, and I take blame for that. Rich had a shot at him, and it looked like the lanes kind of stayed the same. It looked like nobody went to it. Um, that was my assessment. I don't know. Yeah, you know, again, we talk about ball location, being able to execute one from the kick all the way downfield to the coverage, stranding coverage, and being able to get off blocks. And we have to do a better job, again, overall of our basic fundamentals when it comes to that, making sure we're in the proper lanes, playing the proper gaps, and then finishing on the football. So you said it could be too many guys in the gap for somebody not being in there, which obviously has got to be the same yeah. thing. Which did you feel like was the error there? I didn't, we're missing somebody in their lane responsibility, okay. you know. So, and then again, it starts with the kick, and then it correlates down to the coverage. You know, wherever that ball is being placed, obviously, we want our kick or our punt to complement our coverage, and we want our coverage to complement our kick. And on that play particularly, we didn't have we didn't have both of those. So we have to do a better job of that, Mike. Of you know, making sure because you know before that, our guys have been covering pretty well and doing a good job getting on and getting off blocks, but. As you more you cover and you only get better reps, sometimes they'll hit an explosive one on you. But we have to do a better job finishing on the football and giving our, our chance, giving our chance, the opportunity to finish on the football. So we got to clean that up, and we look forward to the challenge this week versus the Jets. I'm, not, I'm never going to pretend to understand special teams like you know about with this, but like, how do you teach that? How do you like? Is that just a complete mental thing, or is there something physical you can teach? Say, hey, listen, don't get out of this lane. Don't. Oh, yeah. Oh, we work that, you know, every day we work kickoff coverage, whether it's in the jog through or whether it's in practice, we're working those basic fundamentals. One, ideeing who's probably going to block us on a particular return. We have certain keys from first level back all the way down to the return. We have particular keys that we're reading when it comes to kickoff coverage. And then from that perspective, once we identify who's blocking us as we're running downfield in coverage, we have to defeat that block, one, with speed, all right, putting stress on the, the uh, return team, and then also, you know, using some, you know, wiggle to make a guy miss, and then using our, our hands, being having upper body violence to get off the block, because the longer in the block, that's going to give those guys the opportunity to rebound and make sure they get in proper leverage. So we got to do a great, better job of defeating the blocks, all right, defeating the blocks, and then finishing on the football. Coming up with a, you know either a body part or the football. So, coach Avery Williams obviously may have to play more nickel in the absence of Isaiah Oliver. How does that kind of change your game plan, if at all, in terms of what he would do on a punt return or just on the turn? Well, you know, well, Tanisha, it, you know, one, losing a player like Isaiah is a is a big loss for us, and you know he's very reliable and he he was a great player for us, you know, on defense and special teams. Um, but you know, again, it's next man mentality. Now, with that, you know, Avery, his role may change on defense and on special teams. So we, as a special teams unit, we rep a lot of different guys in different positions because we believe in small menu, big understanding. That we have a smaller menu that allows our players to have a bigger understanding conceptually of what we're running and what we're trying to accomplish on every particular play so we can move different pieces into different spots. So I'm um, excited for Avery. A- Avery is always going to have a role on special teams. And it's an opportunity, whether it's an offensive phase on special teams or defensive phase on special teams, it's an opportunity for him to go out there and make plays. Coach, would you mind expanding on the small menu, big understanding? You know, I, I, we believe on special teams in our room, you know, the smaller the menu allows our guys to have a bigger understanding of what we're doing. So we could go in there with, we could go in there with a, a big game plan, but those guys might just have an understanding of their particular role rather than having an understanding of the whole concept of what we're trying to accomplish. As a player, um, if you understand the bigger picture, it allows you to be more aggressive and more detailed with your particular role, what you're doing. Um, whether I'm a, a two on kickoff, if I understand I got to contain the football to my threes, fours, and fives that are playing inside of me, I could be more aggressive at setting the edge of our coverage unit. 
Um, as a returner, if I understand what the jammers are doing in, on pump return, whether it's single press, double press, or trying to uh, invite the inside or outside release, I could be more aggressive as a returner when I'm catching the ball and getting up field and getting vertical. So that allows our players too, especially on special teams, we have uh, different players playing different positions, or they might be playing one position but backing up another position due to injury, just like it happened on Sunday. So if we have an injury, we can move different players to different spots. And since we have a small menu, that allows them to have a big understanding and go out there and execute and perform at a higher level. Uh, we have we have multiple guys repping at that position, um, whether it's you know it's, it's based on body types too. So you're looking at the DB room or the receiver room when you're looking at those type of body types when playing that position, whether it's on kickoff coverage or punt return. Um, throughout the week, we rep various players at those positions, and we rep a, in a if this happened, if this may happen, who would play that position? Or if that may happen, who would play that position? If this safety is getting more playing time or this receiver is getting more playing time throughout the game, we expect that happening, who would go in and fill that role? So those in-game adjustments goes back to small menu, big understanding, Tanitra. It allows us as coaches to be able to make those adjustments and we feel great. With, we feel good about those adjustments, great about those adjustments because they understand what they're doing rather than trying to survive the down. We want them to excel on the down. Um, it's just more so like where he feels comfortable directionally when it comes to, you know, punting the football. Um, he's a seasoned vet. He's been doing it for a long time. He's been successful at doing it, and he's already been in the building, which is awesome. So him and Koo and Josh getting on the same, you know, wavelength and rhythm up with how we're operating on it as a special teams unit has been great for our room. So it's great having him in. He's here. He's already been here for a while, and we're excited for the opportunity for him to go out there and perform on Sunday. Yeah. Do you have Yonway ever work on punting? Like, is that something that ever happens, or is that just, man, that's such a fluke thing that? Well, we prepare for you know worst case scenarios, whether it's the snapper situation, if something were to happen to Josh, or if something would happen to our punter, or something would happen to our kicker, or even our holder. So Ku, he does get those reps in on, a, on the, the special teams field on the side, getting his reps in, getting contact on the football. But at the end of the day. Whether you get it with the punt team at practice or in the game, that's a total, di totally different beast. So I really appreciate and I applaud Ku for you know just being just a ball player and going out there and being able to perform. And he did a great job on his last punt, getting that ball inside the 25 for us and allowing that ball to be in the field of play so we could bleed the clock a little bit. Yeah, I guess I was just wondering if it's such a different motion, whether that's something you even rep or it's because it's yeah, we we do rep. Just you know, worst case scenario, because things can happen in game. And you'd rather be prepared without the opportunity than unprepared with the opportunity. Were you, were you all telling Koo to kick to avoid the returner because you were worried about his hang time on those two punts? It was more so worried about the direction, just the direction of the punt. You know, making sure we can get the coverage to where it needs to be. Because if we say, "Hey, Koo, punt the ball right," and then he punts the ball right. Or he goes to punt the ball right, everybody's avoiding and trying to get to the right, and the ball ends up left. Now we have poor leverage on the football. So it was more so, hey, which way do you feel comfortable with punting the ball? So we, we could, the protection is going to be the protection, but getting the gunners and then the rest of our coverage team to get to where they need to get to. We weren't necessarily worried about the hang time because Ku can hit a decent hang time on his punts, um, but the, he hit the, the direction on that last punt was awesome and is exactly what we needed for that situation. Will Justin kick off for you? Uh, no, he won't kick off. Coach, what are the uh, signature uh, traits of Coach Boyer's uh, units? I mean, he's been there a while. The coach Solid kept along. Oh, yeah. I mean, Boyer is heavily respected. I think he's been there. He's been there with uh, – this is now his third head coach he's been under there. Mm -hmm. Former player, played in the league. And is they're a big representation of how he is as a, as a player and now coach. They play fast. They play physical. They're disciplined when it comes to how they rush after the punter and how they cover in the uh, coverage game. Um, they do, you know, they have Tommy Morissette out there. He's came, he's with the Saints. We're pretty familiar with him being in this division with Morissette, great directional punter. He's been doing a great job ever since he's, you know, he was a newly acquisition player when man went down as the punter. And then Matt Amadola, 
strong leg kicker. But their their return units, they're solid with Barrios. They're aggressive. They're 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 going to attack, and it's a great opportunity for us as a special teams unit to come back this week and perform at a high level versus these guys. But Brent does an amazing job with those players out there. You gonna have to fix. Um, thanks. Yeah, you gonna have to fix the the problem that you had on the kickoff return because you know they're gonna see that and try to. Oh yeah, again. you know, it, again, it's basic fundamentals, lane integrity, being disciplined. You know, in order for us to be aggressive and physical as a coverage unit or as any unit on special teams, you got to be disciplined with your technique and your approach and your assignment. So it's just being consistently disciplined when it comes to whatever our technique or our assignment is, so we could be physical at the point of attack, whether we're blocking, whether we're tackling, whether we're getting off blocks. So. Those are um, things that we look at every week. And even if Richie makes that tackle, we're still coaching the same stuff up. We're still talking about the lane integrity because that's all it takes is for one person to miss a tackle. And then you're one play away from either a touchdown or a tackle inside the 20. Where does Pursue come in on that? Because, you, you know, on a running play, you're like, everybody mm -hmm. gets the ball. Yeah. Um, where does that come in on the coverage? With her? You, know, you know, Pursue usually comes in when you're forcing the returner to go change the direction, yeah. okay. you know. The more vertical penetration you get in the coverage unit, you can at least make that returner to either not allow him to get vertical or you stop his vertical penetration, you create him to go east and west. And now you can pursue to the football still while keeping leverage on the football. This might be a little bit of a question, but since he's long snapper, like, do you ask Matt a lot and try to get information from Matt this week about the pros? Uh, no, we give him a hard time. I've been giving him a hard time the last couple of weeks. You know, I know they, I, I was giving him a hard time. I'm like, hey, how many tickets are you guys uh, – having for the London game. He's like, oh, my brother has me in charge of all the tickets this year. So I thought that was pretty funny. You said Avery might do different things on special teams, but will he still return punt for you? Yeah, that's the plan. You know, we're excited for him. He's been doing a great job of decision making. He's been playing multiple roles for us, and he's been stepping up to the challenge. And he's a good ball player that has a lot of room uh, and to grow as a, as a player. And you only get better reps, and you get better being exposed to different things, whether he's playing on defense or on special teams. And the cool thing about it, he's very humble, and he has a willingness to, to grow. So you know, experience to me is defined with how, what you're exposed to, and are you willing to grow from those experiences? Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. you guys have a great day. Take care.